Canada! Heck yeah! Now this baby hits 88 miles per hour. You're gonna see some serious shit. Wake up. Time to die. Good morning, Angel. Good morning, Charlie. Yo, she bitch. Let's go. Come on, Dad. You're so fast, too. Don't fuck with the babysitter. We came, we saw, we kicked it ass. Swing. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bueller. You can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Oh, oh. What are you looking at, Spothead? Fucking Chuck Norris. Great Scott, you know this is heavy. You just gotta keep living, man. L-I-V-I-N. Cinema Royale. Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we talk about movies in the Ring of Royale at the Round Table of Discussion. I'm your host, Midnight Mike. Along with me are my fellow film officiatos. First off, James Selvin, also known as Jaime Tude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by... School teachers finding regulations that would require him, them to wear panties. Wait, you have to wear panties? Mm-hmm. They're actually they're actually fighting this regulation that you have to wear underwear. <laughs> what? In general? Just, just. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought it was for a specific underwear, but for freaking wearing underwear in general, for God's sakes. This is my question. Cinema Royale's going commando this episode. Uh. Cinema Royale, Royale, the noob. The reason why this show is a podcast show. Exactly. <laughs> And last but not least, our fellow Canadian, Matt Brunet, also known as Animat. Hey guys, welcome to my domain. Yes, yes, as you... Uh, and for if, once, it's not animation. Yes, yes, not animation for once. If you haven't read the title of this uh, episode, it is all about Canadian films, of which uh, Matt is from, so... He should be reigning most of the discussion, hopefully. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> what, be- what better way to start this episode is to start with Matt talking about what Canadian films he has seen or known of. Okay, mm. okay, okay, okay. Let me get things started. Um, just to let you know that I just want to start off by saying, more, well, like, not really more about Canadian films, but also more where I'm from, which is Montreal, Quebec. Um, as you may know, Quebec is more, uh, it's, it's the province where, like, we speak more French than we do English. So with that said, we do tend to have, like, um, our own Hollywood system, if you will. Like, pretty much, where India has uh, Bollywood, and they have their own kind of style of film, we have our own style of cinema here in Quebec, which mostly apprehends to French films. And um, one of the films that I want to start off by talking about, which is pretty much, it's essentially the highest grossing Canadian film. It's, uh, It's called Ball Cop, Bad Cop. Essentially, the premise is... You have a cop that's from Quebec and that he mostly speaks French. And you have another cop who is from, um, who speaks more English and he's from Ottawa. Mostly the gist is that um, he's like the one from, well, not from Ottawa, but from Ontario. The, the Ontario cop is essentially, he's more of the straight man. He's more the kind that like, like, any other cop movie can relate to as the straight cop guy. And he's, and while the Quebec, 
the top from Quebec is essentially the more looser one. The more the kind that he would go in bars and, like, he would fool around in a sense. Like, the one that would, would not be afraid to joke around and get his hands dirty, let's say. And essentially, yeah, it's really action-packed. It's, um, it's actually a bilingual movie. They, bo- they speak both in English and in French. And uh, mostly there are a few Canadian stars that are in there. Um, for those of you Canadians know, um, CBC's very own Rick Mercer, which is the Canadian equivalent of Stephen Colbert or Jon Stewart, is in the movie um, as, um, as pretty much a, a, ho- like a host of a hockey show, pretty much. And yeah, that, that's pretty much... All that I have to say about Bon Cop, Bad Cop, uh, honestly, one of my favorite Canadian films, and uh, it's, re- it's really good. Mm-hmm. And what year was this made in? Um, not too far, actually. I think around, um, I think around 2000 and s- 2008, maybe? Hold on, I'll, I'll, I'll ch- let me check for a sec. Uh, 2006. 2006. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. <clears throat> yes, and uh, just so you guys know, we are kind of looking at a, a huge, humongous list of Canadian films for us to reference to if we uh, don't know off the top of our head. So, yeah, we're kind of <laughs> cheating a little bit, but... SMO Royale, we love to cheat hardcore. I didn't cheat. I used my basic freaking knowledge as a Canadian. Because Canadians are cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Canada that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Canadians are great, but Canada sucks. <laughs> um, Alright, I want to get this out of the way so we don't have to bring it up later. Um... This might be a... Re- uh, teasing, man. Yeah. Um, we may have discussed a few Canadian films in the past. Um, remember the uh, holiday horror-themed episode? Most of those films... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I remember, yeah. Most of the films we talked about from that episode were Canadian, such as My Bloody Valentine, Ginger Snaps... So you can thank Canada for the Silent Night most... Canadian film. Silent... Uh, no, I don't think it was. I was trying to remember. Uh, I think Black Christmas was. Yes. But yeah. Oh, Black Christmas. Right. That's right. what it was. Yeah. So you can thank Canada for most of the holiday horror themed. <clears throat> movies. Okay. Um. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Canada. <laughs> Aside from that, um, according, according to myself, and I'm pretty much, I'm gonna say pretty much, uh, uh, this might this might go for a lot of us American folk. Uh, uh, Canadian film history didn't really start until the 1980s. Yes. According to us. Yeah, according to us. Uh, my lord. Great, great films from the 1980s. Uh, I say this because uh, according to this list, it seems like uh, okay every year uh, leading up to 1980, Canada would squeeze out about... Uh, number of films that I could count on my fingers and then uh, maybe there I don't know Matt were there a lot of short films made during this period um, oh you have no idea we have um, the amount of short films we would have is uh, crazy it's crazy and often um, there are I don't I don't remember specifically which ones, but there are a lot that do steal um, they do steal the Oscars for like best animated short or best short or something. 
Okay. Yeah, that would make plenty of sense. I did take a animation course myself, and then one thing that we learned is that they, the Canadian Film Board loves their animation shorts. Oh, yeah. Well, I think um, there was at one point we actually turned one animated short that won, that won an Oscar... And we turn it into an actual uh, prime time series, like not only for can not only just in Canada, but for like the U.S. as well. Hmm. I don't play on. I don't remember which one though. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't. I remember. I remember st uh, Mr. Cope talked about it at one point. That's all I remember. Like that's that's as far as I can remember. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Yeah, duh, I'm a, like, keep in mind, I'm not cheating, but it's like, I, I still have a bit of a memory, but like, yeah, the, the National, trust me, the National Film Board of Canada, it's actually not far, it's actually um, about 20 minutes to a half an hour from where I, where, where I live right now, and trust me, they love their, uh, they love making animated shorts, they do, they make them all the freaking time. Well, how does it work with the National Film Board? Uh, what's their what's their system like? Are they are they state funded or, or? Um, it's more yeah, it's a bit more state funded because what it is, it's literally the national. It's like it's not not it's mostly just their main hub, essentially. Like they would make their animated shorts in like in there. It's it's their main hub, but it's pretty much. The place where all the anime, where all the um, movies in Canada would like, would be, and they would go talk to. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, it, it is, it, it it is mostly government funded. Essentially, like we gotta have our own, uh, but we gotta have our own history of sin, like Canada, and Canada, even especially Quebec, needs its own uh, history of cinema, so we gotta have that going on. Okay. Uh, so like I was saying, after uh, 1979, after Meatballs was released, uh, Canada squeezed out a few more films, such as uh, uh, Prom Night, Terror Train. <laughs> yeah. Quest for Fire. Okay, have you guys seen this? Wait, which one? Uh, Quest for Fire. Sounds familiar, actually. It is. Uh, it is the first film to star Ron Perlman as a caveman. Uh. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> as a yes. Do you have a picture well, of that? He doesn't I want to have see to that. dress up much, though. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that's, that's interesting. interesting. Uh, let's see if I can pull up a picture here for you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Let me see. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Ron oh, Ron Perlman. <laughs> oh, my God. He looks like he's ready for the set of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Uh, are, the only reason oh that God. I know about this movie <laughs> is because okay. yep this okay. is what your tax dollars go to um, but like I was saying um, uh, yeah the only reason that I personally know about this movie is um uh, I never got to finish it, and I, w I was always quite curious because uh, I was in college at the time I saw it, 
And they actually showed this, and you could show this picture if you want to in the podcast, okay, Mike? Yeah, I will. Uh, you can, uh, yeah, yeah we did not finish it back because back. we were actually watching it. No, go on, go on. We were actually watching it in an anthropology class. Oh, we, yeah, yeah. What? yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yes. Ron Perlman is a is a caveman who's part of a tribe who's part of a, a neo-human tribe that has discovered fire and is working on how to keep it going. And there's some other not so humanoid looking tribe trying to constantly attack their uh, steal their fire and take their women with them. Which, according to paleontologists, would not have happened in any way, shape, or form, but they needed to make a move. So, uh, you know, pillage their women and everything. Make it interesting. But, um. It's to be more, um, it's to be more vi- it's, it's like to explain it more visually, in a sense. Uh, I don't know. I just think they wanted to make something. Uh, at the end of the day, this this was actually pretty corny, uh, from what we saw. Because I remember, I just remember, you know, watching watching all this stuff going in the down in the classroom. You know, uh, cavemen, uh, human beings uh, acting like animals. You know, uh, in this in Ron Perlman society, it's uh, uh, people commit uh, communicate with each other. By going, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, oh, they make wow. hand gestures to communicate when they want to have sex. You, uh, remind, you know what that reminds me of? It's it's like that episode of, um, I don't know if you guys know, in, you remember in the episode of Spongebob, like when they're all cavemen? Uh-huh. And it's like, like with Sponge Tar and Pat uh, Sponge Gar, Pat Tar, <laughs> and uh, Squog. Like, Squog! Pat Tar! Unga Squog! <laughs> it's like the whole episode they speak in, they speak in Godforsaken Caveman. <laughs> is, that, is that pretty much, is that the movie you're trying to talk about? But instead of SpongeBob, we got freaking Ron Perlman. <laughs> I don't know. Did, uh, I don't know. Did uh, did Patrick the starfish end up uh, uh, raping that squirrel chick at some point? Because that <laughs> happened in here. What did did they rape squirrels in the movie? Oh, oh, oh no! No! Oh no! Matt! <laughs> I'm just asking. Why did you Why did you come to the cafe? Why did you just come to that conclusion? There's no... You, you uh, no, said... No, 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 no. Hey. <laughs> he was referring to Patrick the Star raped Sandy at one point in the episode. Referring to that in the movie, the caveman raped a woman. A cave woman. Okay. Yes. That's oh, okay. Well, no, no, no. Sandy's in that episode. <laughs> Uh, I think, like, if that would actually happen, Nickelodeon would have a freaking heart attack, and there goes uh, SpongeBob's reputation, pretty much. Exactly. I don't know. They had Rocco's Modern Life. Yes. One of those. Oh, but in any case. <laughs> Rocco. Mrs. Pizza? <laughs> oh, my God. I think the Nostalgia Critic recently showed, like, ev- like almost every single perverted moment of Rocco's modern life. Oh my god, it was so hilarious. It is. I fucking love Rocco. I have it on DVD complete series, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, best show ever. Uh, so anyway, speaking of uh, animation, the last thing that we got um I wasn't quite finished, but I'll cut you. no, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to share one last funny story about this uh, regarding this film. Mm-hmm. One of the last things that we uh, that we saw about it, that uh, in the movie, that uh, right before the teacher decided to shut it off because she just remembered it's not really uh, appropriate for an anthropology class, 
Um, uh, Ron Perlman is uh, is uh, attacking an invading army of uh, pre-humanoids, and right at this point, when he was fighting back with all these other ape men like creatures, everyone started chanting, "Hell boy, hell boy, hell boy, hell boy." <laughs> Oh, wow. I, I can imagine. Like, I knew at one point, mentioning a Ron Perlman caveman, someone's got to mention freaking Hellboy. Or, like, just Ron Perlman in general, you know? It, it, it's essentially... Yes. It's essentially, like, 300 meets... Um, oh, what was it? It's like... No, not 300. It's 10,000 BC meets Hellboy. Oh. 300 BC. <laughs> Wait. Uh, I'm messing with your head Wait, again. BC. I just had a I just had a strange case of deja vu there because I think you mentioned that before in a previous episode. What it's, Ron Perlman and 10,000 BC? It's like or Hellboy. With Hellboy, it was like there was a funny story about Hellboy. It was we weird because I remember the discussion. It's weird, deja vu. Um, one of the major things of the '80s in Canadian cinema was um, either uh, animation films or uh, horror slasher flicks, and there was a god awful a lot of them. I mean, for animation, everybody should know about the Care Bears. The Care Bears. Oh, of course. It's the film that... Uh, that perhaps the greatest uh, film that should ever come out of the 80s. Uh, uh, or out of Canada, for that matter. <laughs> In a Care Bears family. Yeah! Yeah, I remember. I I made. I don't know if you guys. I don't know if any of your viewers know, but like I recently have done a review of the Care Bears movie, and I will admit that yes, it is a stupid, stupid <laughs> film. But I will. Say, it's like, but like you got to be. Um, like you have. It's pretty much you have to be like in that right mindset in order to enjoy it. It's it's pretty much one of those situations where if you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. I pretty much learn I pretty much learned that, and I end up singing like the last song at the end of the movie. Like they had a sing along bit, and like I I end up singing along like in a Care Bears family, yeah. <laughs> and it's great to be in that Care Bear family. See, then Secret <laughs> Bear, yeah, and everybody. <laughs> But yeah, three years in a row, a Care Bear movie was made, uh, released. 85 was the Care Bears movie, 86 was Care Bears movie 2, A New Generation, and 87 was the Care Bears adventure in Wonderland. Yep, for those of you who don't know the order, it, it's pretty much the, uh, the order is essentially the, the first movie is where we get uh, freaky, like, Nicholas as this trying to do a good impersonation of Judge Doom. The second one is the Christopher Walken villain of Time for a Game of Disappearing Bears. And the third one, you get a frame of possibly one of the scariest things I've ever seen in my life. Like, it, it's like mm. the villain is stupid, but then you get that one frame. You, It's like, I can imagine someone will get a freaking, like a kid can get a freaking heart attack of fear. <laughs> like, Jesus freaking Christ. <laughs> Every time I look at that thing, it's always worse than what I imagined. I'll tell you what, though. The, uh, there's one thing that uh, Wonderland really had going for that, for it, and that was uh, Grumpy Bear rapping. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> the Pickle Beats! Pickle Beats! Pickle Beats! Oh. The pickle Beats. Mm-mm. <laughs> Oh, if I Jesus. ever if I ever start a record company, that's what I'm going to call it: is Pickle Beats Records. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! 
<sighs> yeah, no, that's the initiation. Yeah, you gotta it's beats with an A. B A. Braveheart lion, like <laughs> pickled beats. Oh my god, that is corny. <laughs> um. Okay, so if you're not, uh, so at that's one extreme of animation, which is the. Uh, uh, which is the extremely beloved childish side, and then at the op- opposite side of their animated films, you have It's your one-way ticket to Friday night. Call it Heavy Metal. Heavy Metal? Oh, oh yeah. my God, Heavy Metal! Yes, Heavy I Metal can... is Canadian. <laughs> wow, I a lot, doesn't it? Oh. Wow, that it's embarrassing. I should be the one who would know, who would talk about heavy metal. No, but that that's actually true. Um, which is really interesting. That this is actually a really really rare animated film because like it com- it combines two things that normally wouldn't be done to this day in an animated feature. Number one being that it's an adult animated film. Often there are a lot of scenes where it's not really that violent, but there's a lot of sex, so there's a lot of nudity essentially. And number two is that this is actually an anthology film. Um, It's pretty much a combination of three different stories into one, which is really, like, again, really rare. Like, the only ones that you could think of is, like, all the Disney film, like, Fantasia and all the Disney animated films done in, like, during World War II, like the package films, like Make My Music or uh, Saludos Amigos or Three Caballeros, for example. So, uh, yeah. For, yeah. How many anthology enough, films it's not about, do you know of that not, uh, that aren't actually horror anthology? Um, actual anthology. Exactly. Oh boy, that is a, yeah. That's a really good question. Like even in like the only other one that I can think of in terms of animation is called Fears of the Dark. It's, uh, yeah, it's actually a true, hor- it's not any kitty thing, it's an actual horror animated anthology movie. And, uh, other than that, wow, that is a really good question. What other anthology, f- like, do you mean an anthology film in general, or, like, anthology animated films? Well, anthology films in general. See, that's why I bring up Heavy Metal as a case, because, uh, it is, it is not a horror anthology film. It's, uh... It's a sex violence action anthology film. Yeah, and oddly enough, it it has nothing really to do about heavy metal. It's mostly uh, a sci-fi action flick, I believe. But I know it's sci-fi. Yeah. Oh, but the soundtrack is killer, dude. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> oh yeah, that's for sure. It's your one-way ticket to midnight. Call it heavy metal. Just right, call it heavy metal. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I'm looking at something and I'm just ready to talk about it. I'm just, just kind of last minute researching to see if I'm correct with the origin of the film, if it's Canadian or not. And you guys might get a kick out, out of this. Just let me do my. Um, so it's a. I'll give you a clue. It's a. It's a family film. It's a very popular family film. Do you think? <laughs> family thing. No. Family um, film. Family. Is fa- that it's like out in theaters? Like uh, worldwide? Um. Is it a? Is it fantasy? Is it? Time to guess that movie with Midnight Mike. Um, the one I'm talking about is like it came out in the early in the late nineties. Sweet Jesus, I have no idea. Oh God! Wow, that is a good. I have no idea, honestly. James, you got an Beethoven? idea? No, close, close. Airbud. Air Bud. Air Bud. It, it, Disney's Air Bud? Yes. It was. It, it, 
According to the list of Canadian films of 1997, huh? Air Bud was a Canadian film. Oh my god. Wow. You know, I, I honestly, I haven't seen Air Bud, but I am, sh- the one thing that, it, like, I am is just, I am so freaking shocked about how many, like, it's because of this film, how many freaking, not, like, useless, unnecessary freaking spinoffs we have to have because of freaking Air Bud. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Air Bud sequels, yes. and then suddenly Air Buddies, yes. and then we got Halloween, like Super Buddies, Snow Buddies, Spooky Spook Buddies. L- let, let me uh, explain a little bit here. They're and not I, my buddies. I was I was gonna make this as a separate episode, but this is actually a quick discussion. Air Bud is a Canadian film, and it started the whole pet slash sport genre. And uh, Air Bud, uh, he plays sports. The first film, he played basketball. Second film, he played football. The third film, he played soccer. The fourth film, he played baseball. And the f- fifth film, he played volleyball. <laughs> like, then, they, then they're scraping. They, that, like, that's like an amazing. Then they're scraping at the bottom of the barrel here, Disney. You're scraping on the bottom of the barrel here. You're scraping for shit. And it's like, ah, everybody had puppies. Let's have movies starting their puppies. So, Air Buddies is pretty much Air Bud's puppies. Yeah, it's Air Bud Gen 2. And now yeah. they no longer do sports. They do whatever the frick they yeah. want. And, and, they, and they fucking talk. Yeah, they it's like have... it's freaking Beverly Hills Chihuahua, but for, with lab they... dogs. They were they were programmed genetically by the Disney Channel, um, but I I think they have forever. The problem with those movies is remember back when the the concept of a, a talking animal film was was so novel and so unique and then when uh that you know when they when they actually did it they they spent time to put character into the characters and uh like say mylon otis or um homeward bound and then babe comes along and and changes the whole game and everything the, these films were interesting and unique because of their terrific characters and the fact that they that they had uh, 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 they had new techniques. They had the latest uh, techniques to to tell that kind of a story. Air Buddies are an onward. Space Buddies, Treasure Buddies, uh, this oversaturation of talking animal. F- films that it, it it's not anything new anymore it's it, it's uh it's boring no the it worst thing something is that was once special and unique and is boring no the worst thing is essentially nowadays when they release any talking animal movies like we pretty much cringe at the concept like for god's sakes when they when Disney released Beverly Hills Chihuahua, we were like, "Oh God, Disney, what the hell, man!" And like the worst thing is, I remember I was like, "Okay, this was the most shocking thing I've ever done." Like I remember at one point I bought a DVD and Blu-ray of a Disney film. I forgot which one it is. I looked at their catalog, and I flipped the pages, and there I found freaking Beverly Hills Chihuahua three. I was shocked at this because I didn't even know there was a Beverly Hills Chihuahua 2. <laughs> I was like, where did this come from? Direct How did DVD. This get so under my radar? Direct DVD. You don't hear nothing about it unless you see it on TV as a commercial to promote the damn film. Oh exactly. God. But. And... 
<laughs> and uh, I think uh, I think uh, what what was it? Uh, Reese Witherspoon in the first one, basically doing her uh, her, her uh, legally blonde shtick. Um, yeah, uh, like she didn't even show up for the sequels. Yeah, like, uh, is it hard to imagine why? <laughs> well, just look at the, uh, but just look at the uh, director's uh, past history. Uh, when you when you've got the Scooby Doo movies on your on your film resume, actually, Beverly Hills Chihuahua looks pretty damn good. <laughs> oh Jesus, that that's a sad, sad resume. Right there. It's yeah. like, I worked on these. Go home. <laughs> like, my greatest achievement is Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Go home. <laughs> Start a new life. You're having a... I, I think you're, you're having a midlife crisis right now. Um, okay. Have, have you noticed the names of Air Bud's puppies? No. No. Rose... Bud. Rosebud, Bud, Bud, uh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Yeah, it's not like a parody of Buddha. It's Buddha. Uh, but Buddha ball, Mud, oh Mud ball, Rosebud, Rosebud, <laughs> and B dog. Okay, J okay, James. You just gave me yes. possibly one of the most hilarious images. I'm just like, at like just the ending of, or like at one point, like the scene in uh, Citizen Kane. Like we see, like we see, like the guy he he's dying, and we just look at him clo closely to his mouth, and he says, "Air Bud." <laughs> da 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 da. Uh, oh, I got a better idea for you. How about? How about uh, at the end of the movie, instead of throwing the sled in the fire, he throws Rosebud the dog yes. into the fire. <laughs> yeah, because Rosebud is the obviously the female puppy out of the litter. Oh, <laughs> they gotta go somewhere. They got. Oh well, no, wait, like, no. I I won't go there. Never mind. Just... I was gonna go into something really twisted, and I was like, <laughs> wait, actually. That, that's her sister so let's not go there it's kind of funny how uh, Air, okay. Air Bud has been in all of the films well all of the original trilogy but Air Bud talked in the first two Air Buddy movies which threw me off uh, I, and yeah, I like wouldn't know because I haven't seen it yeah, well, that that would be weird. It's like suddenly, it's like the dog suddenly talks. It's like, okay, did we enter in the world of like cats versus dog? Yeah, just like, like just like after Air Buds spikes back three years later, Air Buddies comes out, and you're just like, okay, this is a spin off with the Air Bud. Wait, 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 Air Buds talking? What? Wait, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait! What, yes. happened to, what happened to the Air Bud that I knew three back then? What, 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 what? I think somebody's been watching Tom and Jerry the movie. <laughs> oh, Dread, you caught me, Matt. <laughs> the greatest gift of life, my friend. <laughs> it's a daily uh, gift. <laughs> God. Um. Yeah, I just wanted to get I wanted to get that out of the way, so Yeah, well, like this is no longer about so, Canadian films. This is mostly about films about talking animals. Non animated, just the live action ones. <laughs> exactly. And like I like how we just transition to another fucking topic from the original topic. <laughs> Okay, so is it my turn? Yes, yes, yes it is. Oh, yay. Okay, so um, I guess I'll start off with another interesting story because I like to start I like to start off with weird, funny stories before getting into the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, 
you guys know the concept. Like, you always hear, oh, everybody has that one rich uncle that works in the movie industry. You know that? Um, no, I don't no, know that. No, never heard of that. You never heard of that? Like, the rich uncle that works in the movie industry? No. I don't know. Well, anyways, this is something that I've heard. But anyways, I just want to say that um, I actually do have an uncle that he's actually a well-known actor in Quebec. And he has done a lot of work, mostly, like, translation work uh, to be, like, like to like to translation from, like, like, for the French version. Like, for example, he has done, like, the Peddler in Aladdin. He has done Crush. I think it's... No, he did Nigel in Finding Nemo, and he did, Bar- I think, Barbosa in... No, not Barbosa. No, no. Um, uh, Captain Haddock in The Adventures of Tintin. And, um, yeah, and his name is uh, Manuel Tadras, by the way, if you guys want to do your research. He has only done French works, but I will say that um, if he has done uh, some English works, and... You guys may know him more as uh, uh, Rodrigo. I think it's Rodrigo, or something like like Rodrigo Borjo- Rodrigo Borjoni in the Assassin's Creed games, in uh, specifically uh, Assassin's Creed Two. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Anyways, so this is your uh, your. This is your uncle, you say? Yeah, he's a yeah, voice my actor. Uncle. Um, he's an actor and a voice actor because he did a lot of work. Like he also did some work, like in theater and also uh, like French, uh, like uh, Quebec movies. But also, I want to also talk about his son. That his his son, okay. who's pretty much my half cousin. His name is um, Zevi. I'll, I'll get to it. Like, his name is Xavier Dolan, and he recently released a film, and it really got major praise. Like, even like Oscar recognition for his film called uh, um, "J'ai tué ma ma mère," which is pretty much a translation of "I killed my mother," and this is more of an an audio biographical piece. He has written it. He has both written and directed the film. And yeah. Hmm. Ta da. Yeah, he kills his mother in the movie. Um, not really. It's um it's a it's a, it's a more it's a more stranger concept than that. I think like the title is more of a meta. It's, it's more of a metaphor. He didn't really kill his. I don't think he really killed his mother. It's uh. It's like in my, I think it was like for something else. Like I ki- like I killed my mother. Maybe like in a spiritual way. I don't mean like a like grab a knife. Like a grab knight insert hard to mom. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Canada needs moms. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, we don't ba- we don't do the Bambi to our moms. <laughs> oh, oh, good, good. Um, um, we don't have any men. We don't have any men in the forest. Let's say. Sure. Sure. Echo. Okay, well, that sounds all quite interesting. Well, congratulations to your uncle and to your cousin. Yeah, I thought I just want to mention, uh, I thought I, I just want, I would mention him since, like, we are talking about Canadian films, and might as well talk about, like, a Canadian actor. Mm-hmm, that so, is pretty nice. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. What else do I notice on this list here that I uh, recognize? Okay. Scanners. Who has seen it? I know the director. I know the machine. Scanners. 
Yes, and I know how to operate it, though. <laughs> Good point. So, uh, yes, Scanners is, is a is a film that actually spawned two direct-to-video sequels. Um, I didn't think uh, they were a terrific series of films. However, it dealt with a, a rather novel concept of people with the special power to take control of anything that has a network with the power of their mind. That is, uh, whether it's a nerve network, i.e. Uh, another body, another, uh, another uh, entity, or maybe it's a computer network. But every skill, every skill comes with a, a, some sort of price to pay. And the price paid here is that uh, if you're a scanner, then you have to be trained to shut out the thoughts and information that you're constantly getting from other networks and other people. Like you can hear their thoughts or you can... You are never, you are never in a moment of silence. Hmm. Um, Just... mm-hmm. It um, it it dealt with the i with the idea of of such people or such possibilities, and the only way that you possibly can to make it interesting, and that's turn it into sci-fi action. And boy, did things start getting weird. Uh, you have people exploding because uh, uh, scanners get inside of their heads and uh, make their inner inside pop. What? Mm-hmm. What the fridge? Yes, it is. I forgot to mention that it's also a sci-fi action horror series <laughs> from the brain of one messed up individual known as David Cronenberg. Yes, David Cronenberg, the Canadian director. Who did what? Ooh. He is the Wait. most. He is the most well-known director in Canada. He has made a ton load of movies that we might know. Yeah, and, no, no, it's just that David Cronenberg is like that name is so familiar. Like, it, I just wanted to know, it's like, what movies he has done? Like, I've heard that name. Mm, uh, he's directed. Let's see. Let's go through his filmography really quick here. Uh, Stereo, Crimes of the Future, Shivers, Rab. Rabid, a fast company, the brood, scanners, videodrome, the dead zone, the fly. Oh my god, wait, the, the remake? The Jeff Goldblum? The fly? 1986, the fly. That was directed by David. Holy Jim! Yep. Uh, dead Ringers, Naked Lunch, uh, M Butterfly nice. Crash. Yeah. He's. Uh, Video Drum. What a weird freaking movie that was. I was gonna mention that because since you mentioned Scanners, I was gonna mention Video Drums. That's the one I've seen. Oh my god, that oh, is. Yeah. Oh man, Video Drum. One of the I think is one of the best David Croner films that he has ever made. So, starring James Woods, of course. Hades <clears throat> himself, baby. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> So <laughs> long live the new flesh. Long live the new flesh. Yes. Set in Toronto in the early '80s, it follows the CEO of a small television studio station who discovers a broadcast signal featuring extreme violence and torture, also known as snuff television. Layers of deception unfold as the as he uncovers the signal source and loses touch with reality in a series of increasing bizarre and violent hallucinations. It it screws with your mind. It those I mean there there there's parts of movies where they they tape the the snuff station snuff show on tape. So you see this VHS tape on on the James Woods James Woods is torso, kind of like poking out like it's very creepy. Like it's like 
what the fuck is going on? It's like, and then the torso is just, it's, it's very trippy. Very fucking trippy. Why are they? Um, I, I, I guess it was something along the lines of, he, uh, uh, he was merging his body with technology. What, what, what was the, what was the moral? What was the ultimate theme of that movie? I, I know, I was actually a very good question. I was trying to remember what the central theme of that. Um, I mean, he basically, he uses his own body to stick to, to smuggle a gun into a TV station. Yeah, uh, he sticks a he sticks a gun into a slot in his stomach, goes into a TV station, and starts shooting. Yeah, it up yeah, and it, it everybody. It, yeah, yeah, he puts it in his like his in his body, and it and it kind of morphs into his hand. I th- sort of kind of thing. It's like he's this morphic being, and then the guns like in his hand, sort of. It's yeah. it's it's very one of the trippiest movies I've ever seen. It's like some one of the. Recommended movies yeah. you should check out if you want to check out David Cronenberg. And then it ends with him shooting himself, saying, "Long oh, live the new, new flesh. flesh." What was the point of all of that? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Ah. <sighs> It, 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 yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, very, very fucking strange. Yeah, it's really hard to explain, because, yeah, you just have to see it for yourself. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. They use beta, mm. they use beta makes video cassette tapes instead of VHS for prosthetics effects. So, if huh? you, so in the movie, you see that tape... In the body, it's not a VHS; it's a Betamax. Because VHS tapes were too large to fit. More, you know. Yeah, definitely. All right, let me uh, let me explain. Um, Videodrome was once described by Andy Warhol as a clockwork orange of the '80s. Yep. So. If you want to check out David Cronenberg's filmography, he's Canadian. Check him out. He's got really good uh, film- good films. That guy. He has a good rep. Making Canada awesome. Yeah. Canada! Heck yeah! Okay, I'm going to go straight forward with this one. Is the 2011 Canadian comedy called The Goon. This one is about it's yeah like I said it's a comedy in which this guy he's he pretty much he's pretty much this unemployed guy like a loser and pretty much and he suddenly founds himself being the coach of a minor Canadian hockey team which is pretty much what you'd expect from uh, from Canada considering that like it like Canada is our sport so of course we have a lot of Canadian like a lot of hockey films like even in bog pop bad cop like i mentioned earlier there's like there are, there are a few scenes that involves hockey but the one special thing i will say about the goon is pretty much the people who worked on it you guys know you guys know who these people are the writers are evan goldberg which you may know as the um i think like the writer of uh, like writer and even executive producer of films like Knocked Up, Super Bad, and uh, The Pineapple Express, oh, and another yeah. writer that worked, oh. and another writer that worked with him is Jay Baruchel, believe it or not. The name is familiar. Um, for, Why well, is that? Oh, well, Jay Baruchel, he was um, recently in This Is the End with. Uh, with uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Jonah Hill, and all that stuff. But you probably know him also um, as, well, he was also in The Sorcerer's Apprentice, but hit, probably his most well-known role is Hiccup in How to Train Your Dragon. Oh. So, yeah, it's that guy. Mm-hmm. And um, oh. uh, 
I'm trying. I'm trying to remember like who's like the star of the movie. I think it's another guy you may know. It's Seth. Uh, Sean, Sean William Scott. No, Sean William Scott. Thank you. There you go. Ah. Uh, so yeah, it's a sense of it, it did. Pr- I, I will say, from what I've seen, like it's a pretty good comedy, and it did well at, at the Canadian box office. It did, didn't get a lot, but just for Canada, it's pretty decent. Like and, it's a pretty decent like uh, box office results. And it's getting a sequel. Yep, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Like when I was looking for the goon, and apparently next year we're gonna have a uh, goon two. I didn't fully check up on uh, it yet. Like I'm not sure if any of the orig- like of the the people that I mentioned will be working on it, but we'll see. Hmm. Okay. James, you got anything else? Oh uh, well. Looking through here. I'd like to, you know, I realize that we do actually have a lot of of actors uh, and actresses that are are from Canada that are actually uh, quite popular uh, here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Like, uh, I think you mentioned Knocked Up earlier. Or did somebody mention Knocked Up? Yeah, Matt did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I did. It knocked uh, up yeah. and uh, like all those kinds of things. all the Seth Rogen films. Like mostly the Seth Rogen comedy films. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Seth Rogen, he's uh Yeah, he's Canadian. Um uh the guy that played the uh, the Green Lantern. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not, uh, Ryan Ryan Reynolds, yes, he's very Canadian. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the actors that I see on on television a lot of the time. Back, I used to watch. I used to watch Friends quite a lot. Um, uh, Matthew Perry is a Canadian. Uh, uh, whose line is it anyway? Uh, well. I think it's pretty obvious on that show who's who's Canadian because mm-hmm. they don't stop referencing it every single call mockery episode. Yeah. So yeah, pretty um, much our Canada, national Canada has given us some awesome Canadian actors and actresses. Yeah. It's one of their it's one of their finest exports is Canadians. Yes. Uh, Canadian actors. Yes, Nathan Fillion. And, uh, five, from oh, sorry, Nathan Fillion uh, is Canadian, who's best known for Firefly. Just, uh, just saying that. Um, what were you gonna say, Matt? Um, I also want to mention that there are that we also do have a lot of great. Like, if I want to talk about animation for a bit, since I am the animation guy, um, that. Uh, Canada has also given us a lot of great Canadian animators. A lot of them are actually from Canada. Uh, uh, like Pixar's uh, Glenn McQueen, one of the original guys of Pixar, who unfortunately died um, early on, like during Finding Nemo, <laughs> but like was um, one of the top people. Like, like if he were alive today, he would have been like one of the popular ones alongside like um, Pete Doctor. Uh, Andrew Stanton and Brad Bird and stuff, but also so, um, there's also Richard William, the great Richard Williams, the directing animator of of of, um, of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, that, that's another great one, and uh, whatever. Um, uh, if I can think, oh, I forgot his name. Nick Ramieri or Nick Ramieri or something. He's a Disney, like he was a Disney animator, and um, he he actually worked on film. He actually was one of the people, one of the animators who worked during the Disney Renaissance, essentially. So he's Canadian mm. as well. So, um, 
So essentially, um, Canada has also given a great contribution when it comes to animators, is all I want to say. Yeah, thanks for telling us that. We love to get to know uh, all the Canadians out there. Uh, I mentioned before that alongside the holiday-themed horror films, you know, there's they're mostly Canadian, and I just forgot to mention that out of the, uh, besides My Bloody Valentine, Black Christmas, Ginger Snaps, and etc., Jesus Christ, Vampire Hunter is Canadian as well. Oh, yeah. I thought you were just saying, I, I thought you were just saying just Vampire Vampire Hunter, but then I forgot. Oh, yeah, there is a Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter. I thought you were going, but Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter is also a Canadian <laughs> film. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Uh, that could be as well. <laughs> um, I was just going really quickly through what last films to talk about. A boot. Talk a boot. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You got to you got to make that joke, don't you? You just got to make that joke. You got to make the fucking a boot. <laughs> You're welcome. We got to mention it sometime. I don't know why. Whenever this is anybody boot, mentions this is about <laughs> this is a boot. This is about get it right. I don't know. Like it sounds too like when people say a boot, they make it sound too much like freaking a boo from Aladdin. <laughs> what are you talking a boot? You know? Uh, I'm just pulling your leg. Uh, I was gonna. Say, I mentioned the last. Uh, um, sorry, did I cut you off? I was gonna say something, but I forgot it. Thank you very much. Go ahead. I need to rethink what I was gonna say. Go ahead. Oops, sorry. Last. Uh, last uh, thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, my all-time, uh, forget everything I've said before, my all-time favorite Canadian film okay. is... We already talked about the Care Bears movie. Huh? We already talked about the Care Bears movie. I wasn't going to mention that again. Uh, <laughs> Strange Brew... Strange Brew, yeah, Strange Brew is excellent. Okay, all right. Wait, Strange Brew, is that that film with Paul Giamatti, or am what? I thinking of something else? No, that's Rick, Rick Moranis. It's Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas. Back, This was made oh. back in the 80s. Oh, right, oh, that one, right. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Bob, oh, oh, the Bob and Doug movie, right. Yes, the the McKenzie Brothers movie. Yeah, I yes, about that. it it is uh, it is is actually I I sort of think one of the uh, best underrated comedies that I that I've ever seen in my life. They they take they take two characters uh, that um, uh, Moranis and Thomas both created on uh, CCTV. Uh, the McKenzie brothers, a couple of beer-loving uh, goofballs, and uh, they just des- they decided to make a movie about them, in which they're you know they they try to go and get a job at a beer at a beer factory, and uh, they end up uh, uh, they end up foiling a plot to uh, uh, to basically. Uh, monopolize the the beer industry. Some evil plot. Yeah. But um, it it's all. It, if it sounds like a ridiculous premise, that's great. It's a comedy. You know, go in, laugh at it, shut your brain off. By the way, I just want to mention a uh, little fun fact about Bob and Doug McKenzie. There was a in Canada. We actually I remember watching. We had a Bob and Doug. McKenzie documentary about like pretty much how Bob and Doug were made and stuff like that and the host was actually our very own prime minister oh. so, 
So yeah, we cherish Bob and Bob and Doug so much. We had to get the freaking Prime Minister of Canada to host it. And at one point, like he was in his, at the end of the uh, at the end of the documentary, like he was leaving his office, and like there, one of his agents came in. It's like, sir, uh, Mr. M Mr. Paul Martin, what about your suit? And we see him. He's just exactly like the McKenzie brothers. It is so hilarious. <laughs> um. Like, can you see Obama do that? Like, dress up like some kind of Saturday Saturday Night Live character? <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know. I, th I think uh, I think we have a vice president that's a, a Saturday Night Live character. <laughs> or at least he could double for one. <laughs> um, let me mention... Well, let's not thank Obama. <laughs> Let me uh, mention a few more, just briefly. Just, and this will lead to the end, hopefully. Okay. Um, uh, okay. So, of course, a can uh, Canadian U.S. co-production animated film came out this year. Wait, which one? Escape from Planet Earth. Next one, please! <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed that. I was like... That's a Canadian U.S. co-production. Oh my uh, goodness! Uh, uh. <laughs> do, do you have to mention that? Do you have to mention that? I, that had, I had to mention it because Matt has a cruciating. <laughs> I'd rather not say because you can see it on in video form. Uh, <sighs> All right. That was, a, that was a crap, crappy movie, <laughs> but really horrible and messed up production that needed and I kid you not 17 rewrites in order to make <laughs> something way too simple mm -hmm. I kid you not 17 so, freaking rewrites so there's a another film that I'd like to mention that came out in 2001 it's a Canadian American comedy film it's called Sea Spot Run oh my god I remember mm -hmm. yeah I think, isn't that one of those like your typical, like your typical, like family flick, oh, like your typical. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Animals. It's about a male man. It's about a male man who takes in a stray bull mastiff, the the titled Spot, who only to learn that he's a trained FBI dog that escaped from a witness protection program and is targeted by, targeted for killing by a crime boss, and it is just, <laughs> um. <laughs> David Arquette is in this movie. He's the mailman. Uh, good or bad? Um, God, I've seen it a long time ago, and it's... I think it's not really good. It's not really funny. I mean, there's there's this running gag, sort of, where Spot uh, bites the crime boss's balls off, and at the end, he's got these clangy balls, and it goes clank. Clang, clang, clang. It's it's just so like, essentially. Is, so did, can, is this? Are you telling me this is the precursor of Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen? <laughs> I think so. I mean, I just I like, remember that's the only thing I remember. Is, I just remember this from the damn movie. It's just like Spot just goes after the the balls of the crime boss, and then you know he's he's like ah. Oh, and then at the end of the movie, he comes back, but he's got these metal balls, and you hear him clank, 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 clank every time he walks. And it's like supposed to be funny or something. It's like, okay. What was Spot? Let's like was Spot? Like after that part, do you see Spot behind enemy scrotum? He no, he goes after, and then for the climax, spoiler alert, he goes after the guy's balls again. Even though they're metal again, and he's arrested for whatever he's done in the movie, so it's just. I think brass balls. Bra oh, I think they're like. They're not even. Uh, yeah, yeah. C Spot Run, one of the oddest movies to come out. Even though it's set in Seattle, it's it was shot in Vancouver. Vancouver. Uh, right, Vancouver. The other, like the opposite side of the popular town in Canada. 
probably the only interesting thing to do in the west of Canada. Um, and uh, in the rendition of all the episodes in the past, I've mentioned the oddball film of each topic. Um, and I mentioned, this actually kind of lead it up, I mentioned films from the classic Robert Rodriguez slash Quentin Tarantino film Grindhouse, where they had trailers, fake trailers. And, yes. Um, mm-hmm. And um, so we talked about, let's see, talked about yeah, things. Yeah, Nicolas Cage as... Um, Nicolas Cage as Fu Manchu and the werewolf women of the SS. We talked about things killing. Um, I think that was pretty much it. And then we're leading up to this trailer um, called Hobo with a Shotgun. And this was made into a movie. That is true. That mm. is, that is a Canadian. Wait, where was the film again? Hobo with a shotgun. Hobo. I think in a western. I think it's in the western part of uh, Canada. Maybe it's somewhere like Calgary or Edmonton or something like that. I don't know. Mm. I don't, but but it just it's. It, uh, how do I describe it? It's just a Canadian exploitation action film where a hobo wants a lawnmower for some odd reason. He wants a lawnmower. He's looking in the shop. He's the, and he, he he rides trains. He's a hobo. He goes into this crazy ass town known as Scum Town. Well, it was it was called Hope, and then they, you know they spray painted and said Scum Town. It's like this run down Canadian town, whatever. And this hobo just goes in there and um, meets this young lady. You know, she, he lives with her for a while, and you know they talk about bears and stuff. And eventually, um, the the town is run by this crazy cooped up person. He's like this. He's crazy. He he does. He just kills. The residents just like, you know, out, out of the blue. It's just like, it's, oh, it was just, it's crazy. It just goes all over the place. It's just, but then the hobo is like, I'm going to do something. He goes into the same shop where the lawnmower is and grabs the shotgun and starts killing people. He just goes, boom, boom. And oh my God, it just, uh, oh my God, this is, my, this is the greatest movie I've seen in my life. <laughs> This is the the. This is the uh, the hobo character, the hero. Yeah, the hobo. The hobo is the hero. He just just he just like I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna save this town. I don't know. It's oh, hard. I don't know if that considers as being heroic. I I think that sort of. I don't know who uh, uh who is he shooting exactly. It's just. All it's how do I let me uh try to remember it's been a while since I've seen it and um da 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 um uh, oh because <laughs> oh, the town is full of bad people and you know amongst them is the um there's an amateur filmmaker and he's shooting uh his classic films known as the bum fight movies and he's and he gets like pissed off about that because he's a hobo himself. And, and the guy, the guy wanted him to be in this movie. He's like, "No way, I'm not going to be in that film. Are you nuts?" It's just the town is just freaking. I can't really explain it. It's just something you have to freaking see for yourself, or watch, okay. or well. just, or just watch the the trailer to get the gist of it. Yeah, I did see the trailer. It was pretty hard to forget. Um, so, I guess we'll have to sit down and watch the whole movie sometime. Yeah, it's, pretty much. Yeah, because it's... Oh, it's worth it. It's, it's oh my god. It's, it's like one of the best um, exploitation films that came from the trailers from Grindhouse. I mean, if they would, if they made the fucking woman, werewolf women of the SS, with directed by Rob Zombie, featuring Nicolas Cage and Fu Manchu, then that's a completely different story. But Hobo with a shotgun, 
Come on, it's a hobo with a motherfucking shotgun. <laughs> the only thing I could say about that is, Oh my god, this is the greatest weapon I ever used in my life! Uh, I got nothing. Yeah. That just... Oh, man. Oh, my God. Um... I just well, want to... I guess it sort of wraps it up a bit. Yeah, I guess that's all we have. Like, we could go on forever, but... No, that uh... that, that is all we can talk about. Yeah. I just like to mention and, really briefly that the end credits song of Hobo with a Shotgun is "Run with Us," which is the classic theme for the TV show known as The Raccoons. Ooh. Oh, I wait, remember the Hobo with a Shotgun. Wait, Hobo with a Shotgun had uh, the song "Run with Us." Mm-hmm. As the end credits oh, song. My... As the end credits song. It just, I was watching it, I was like, oh I, know this, I know this song. I can sort of picture that. <laughs> so strange. <laughs> it's too weird, but How yet could that I work? can see it happening. You can run with us. We are free. And that is it for our Canadians, our salute to Canadians, the Canada, and the films themselves. Yeah, so what's up next, Maestro? The topic of the next uh, episode is films in, in the future. You know, it's going to be pretty interesting because, you know, we'll talk about, you know, films and how they depict the futures of sci fi and movies in general. With that, that concludes this old Canada episode. <clears throat> this has been Cinema Royale, and thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, in the comments below, please tell us what your favorite Canadian films are. Tell us which Canadian films we did not mention on the podcast. And uh, just go subscribe to Matt Brunet. He's awesome. Check out his videos on YouTube, man. And also on Blimp. I... <laughs> now, uh, good night. <laughs> good night, YouTube. Good. See you later, dudes. Ciao for now, y'all. Hello, eh? Hello? Hello, eh? 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 From... Oh, dear. These good jokes are gonna come up. Canadian jokes, I uh have. -huh. Sure. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know how... Well... I did. Now, I don't know how well I've done my homework, because I'm not 100% sure if you guys would know the movies I would be talking about. Uh, um, we'll, we'll find out, because, uh, I mean, the list on Wikipedia is a pretty good listing of all the films Canada's made. Yeah, pretty much. It's a freaking huge list. It is, from every fucking year. <laughs> oh, it's like, I was, I was just checking, it was like, it's like, it's links to other Wikipedia pages, like, sweet Jesus. I know, I know, from the 90s, 2000s, and the two, 2010s, it's just like, really, can't you do a separate, page, like, one page of it? So stupid. I'm mad. Call. Hello. What the fuck happened? Mm. It's not my day. All right, man. Um.
Let's get the Canadian back. Eh. That's the only genuine Canadian here. <laughs> exactly. You gotta have a Canadian. Canadians are cool. Yes. Here is my favorite Canadian movie. Strange Brew. Oh, that's a good one. All right. Strange Brew. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, bad. I know. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Welcome back, Matt. I hear a slight echo. Oh, sorry about that. No, no, no. I was just closing my... I was closing my console. Uh, No no worries. No worries. Like, while while I was for you guys, I was just playing uh, Diddy Kong Racing. Oh, groovy. Nice. Diddy Kong Racing! Diddy Kong Racing! I used to play that game. I used to have that game. Good yeah. times. Good fucking times. Yeah, I bought it at a flea market for like 20 bucks. And I have to admit, it's a pretty good purchase. It is. It is. It's a really good racing game. I tried Which, to play it. Uh, is this a is this a re-release or is this a Nintendo 64 version? 64. Mhm. The 64. Okay. Emulator? Uh, no. Like the actual cartridge. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Bought it twenty bucks at a flea market. If it were an emulator, I would get it for free. Exactly. <laughs> That's the whole point of an emulator. <laughs> it's free. It's free, y'all. Yeah. Unless you go to China where they sell that stuff on the street for a buck. Would you like to buy this for a buck? <laughs> oh, there's just true mad. story. My mom uh uh, my sister took a a trip to Hong Kong one time, and I was uh, I was in the hospital at the time, so she decided to get me. This was back in 2000 when the Dreamcast was uh, was supposed to be popular. <laughs> oh dear! All right. And uh, so she sends me uh, a letter. She says, "I got you a bunch of gift well." Uh, games, you'll be amazed. They have all these Dreamcast games, and they're over here in Hong Kong, and they're out on the street. And they're you can only buy, you only need to buy them for one U.S. dollar. It's amazing how cheap they are. <laughs> oh boy! And then when I got them, it, then when I got them, they were all uh, there. Were, there was like eighteen. Uh, there were eighteen pirate cops. Peace. <laughs> Peace. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, Canada. All right. All right. Okay. So, shall we? I shall. Let ready me, to yeah. begin this? <clears throat> Echo. Mm -hmm. Just double checking. Chest one, two, chest one, two. Ah, 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 oh. Was it three weeks since we did the show? Yeah. Due to like countless of delays and stuff. Just like, wow, it's been a while. Actually, more than that, maybe four weeks. I don't know. I wasn't even paying attention. <clears throat> Five, four, three, two, one. Me. Oh boy. Skype, you killing me? You're killing me. You're killing me, Skype. All right. <laughs> you're you're killing me, Skype. Wait.
Oh, man. <clears throat> man, that was just like one hiccup from Skype. <laughs> and it keeps dropping mad. It's like, okay, Skype does not like Canada. <laughs> okay. I gotta wrap. We can wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Well, somehow. So, yeah... I didn't know that, um, I, di I didn't know that David Cronenberg was Canadian, but it does not surprise me, either. <laughs> oh, I knew that. I knew David Cronenberg was Canadian. Oh, Canadian Matt, god damn you. Give me Matt. Just let me finish this. You know? Trying to think of Canada, what Canada, give us back, Matt. Hi, I'm back. All right, Skype hicked up, hicked up on me. So, well, I have to admit, I was really impressed that we went, we went that long without a single interruption. I know. I was surprised when that happened. So, we can yeah. sort of mention a few more briefly and then wrap it up. Whatever pops out. Yeah. I got, I got one more in mind to talk about so but yeah it was... okay great here we go again round two round two oh man don't you do it don't you fucking do it oh. I'm gonna strangle sky by its throat before it's the last thing I do. Can I just say some last words? Mm. <sighs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't you fail me now. You always fucking do this at the end of it. Just every time. Every goddamn time. Give me Matt. Give me... Ah, so that's what you mean by here we go again. Yeah, you heard that. Well, that's good. I was like, oh, here we go again. It was like, here goes what again? What? I don't get it. Oh, okay, that. <laughs> so at least somebody heard me. I was hoping that nobody heard me when that happened. I was like, here we go again! God, I feel like I'm in Quantum Leap oh, or yeah. something. Here we go so... again! You sound like like a bone breeze. It's like, it's like you're eating your ice cream. It's like, oh, here it comes again. <laughs> Brain freeze. Ah. <laughs> All right. All right. So Matt, what is the next Canadian film to talk about? Right. If only they made Argo, then that would be. Awesome. Oh. Let's see. You got something? Yep. Dark water subjects, turn, turn, turn. Tell us a lesson that we should learn. <laughs> the film topic of which we are going to talk about... Uh, I'm just trying to think which one... I, I throw my three magic darts at it, and I'm just debating which one. Oh, did you get all, I got all three all, of them? All three are on the dot board at a topic. So the top three topics, and you guys can choose, are disaster films, film set in the future, or Joan Dante films. I would go with film set in the future. That was the first one. I, um, that was the first one I threw. So that counts as the first one. I'd say either that or Joe Dante films. I know Morgan will love Joe Dante films. Mm -hmm. Ah, true. <laughs> what a conundrum! I guess we'll well. What a conundrum! Interesting. What would you pick? Uh. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two well. pick in the comment section down below. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, that's a real comment. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. That'd be really cool, actually. Um, disaster films, let's see. Gather yeah, a shitload of those. <laughs> um, Joe Dante films, and I don't. Oh, Fully aware of Joe Dante, might have to research that. And films in the future is actually a pretty interesting topic because they that features you know films that have a future that you know we might have passed. Like you know, it's interesting to see how films depict the future. Oh fuck! <laughs> I'm going to go with film set in the future and then next film set in the future <clears throat> you have just been schooled by Matt Brune of Canada I, am I drunk or something no. I, I, I must be drunk I, I'm just babbling <laughs> I want to yeah. say thank you for watching and you've been schooled by Matt the greatest Canadian that I ever know of. Here's a toast to my bestest Canadian friend in the world. I'm from the East, but okay. The, the East? What, you buy New York or something? Actually, pretty close, yeah. You can go to New York City and be American. I could. You could. You, yes. should. you could move to America and become American. But you know, Canada is so much cooler because they helped us get six hostages from Iran back in the late 70s, early 80s during the whole... And then... Oh, then, then, uh, I just watch Argo yeah, if you're... Go, I was just, I go just, home. You're I, drunk. I just, I just watch Argo if you were... Take that Canadian away from you. Sorry, I just watched Argo, and I just can't stop thinking about it. Put down the Canadian and step away from it. Eh, he's my hostage. He's my I know, hostage. I know, I know we make great beers, but for God's sakes, give it a break. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the Swooks and Egg, and I'm going to be in a Canadian film. Okay. Oh, I wonder how the world will be. Was Canadian. I'm coming to Canada. Watch out. And then that's that's, that's mother go. Yo, dude, what's up? Okay, I. But you know, I don't really don't care about blimp. Well, often if if copyright allows, if copyright hates me on YouTube, well then you could check it out on blimp. Uh, yep, exactly. And you know, if you're a partner, you don't. On YouTube, you don't have to worry about those copyrights. Uh, not necessarily. I've... I mentioned about the music at the end credits, uh, copyrighted music, and I just figured out I had to switch it from the YouTube standard license to the Creative Commons license, and you don't have to worry about it no more. Yeah, well, okay. like, create, the difference between uh, Creative Commons and YouTube standards is... Pretty much, like, which one can you, like, if you have the chance to make money, which one would it be, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, uh, there we go. There we go. Uh.